So you just researched a brand new building that you want to be able to work into your town, but you don't really have enough free workers to staff it without crashing your entire economy. No one at the townhouse seems particularly excited about the prospect of picking up double shifts and you get voted down on instituting child labor. Let's talk about all the options you have for expanding your population here in Patron. Now I'm going to be upfront here and say that there is no silver bullet for taking care of the population bottleneck that exists in the game. It is likely going to remain for the entire early portion of the game, but that's not to say that you are without options. Your population is divided into three classes with adults, young, and children, and only adults are going to be the ones working jobs. As the young grow older, then they will reach adulthood and be able to take on jobs, and while I made the joke about not having child labor earlier on, the point at which you become an adult is 12 here in Patron. Well, that has me significantly less excited about this brand new coal mine that I just staffed, but I think you can just grow out of black lung, right? Man, at age 12, I'm pretty sure I was mostly thinking about how the new Bionicle sets from LEGO were not as good as their classic ones. But anyway, having a steady birth rate is going to be a key to having a large population. I'm going to touch more on that towards the end, but first we are going to bring up the research panel to see what we might be able to find for impacting our population. In the early game, right after getting the Gathering Hall, you are able to research Immigration Incentive. This gives you a new policy that you're able to enact to be able to get more immigrants. Turns out, offering starving European serfs cold hard cash can get them to move out of that ancestral home. Now, it is a lot of cash, especially in the early game, and it doesn't get them to move out of those homes very fast, because it gives you a 30% increase to the chance of getting an immigrant every single month. There are still going to be plenty of months where no one is going to show up. As another perk, it is actually going to increase your current population's happiness regarding your immigration policies, and it is going to be important to note that while this is not a total game changer from the early game, it is going to stack with any of the other immigration bonuses that we find later on here. Advancing into the mid-game with the Council Hall, we eventually come to Natality, which is going to be another policy, this one directed at increasing the birth rate within your colony. This policy is a lot cheaper and is going to give you an additional 30% birth rate within your colony and is also going to decrease the happiness that your citizens have towards immigration. They want to be able to just stock this new island with their own. What's important to remember to be able to get the most out of this policy is that parents are only going to have children if they have additional housing space available to them. So upgrading to stone houses and two-story houses is going to be able to give you the most benefit from this policy. Our final stop on the research tree is at Natural Immigration, which is going to be coming at the very end game here. This is going to give you additional immigrants for every church and school in your town. Now, as far as I am aware, the churches and schools just have to be built. They don't actually have to be staffed to cost any upkeep. And unlike the other policies that we researched before, this upgrade is just passive. It is always on. This means that you can whack down just a whole horror movie's worth of vacant houses and schools and watch the immigrants come flocking to your shores. The downside here is that you can never turn this off. I suppose you could deal with the overpopulation by just not supplying the critical housing so they die within a month or two. But hey, even Mr. Staff's a coal mine with 12 year olds doesn't feel good about that. Outside of the tech tree, we have events. These are really only common in the early game, but you do get a few options on being able to pick up additional population with events in the mid to late game as well. These events are random one-offs where the game asks you if you want to have more people or some other bonus that they are offering. Always take the people. The bonuses that they are offering are always going to be temporary, whereas the citizens are going to be able to live for years and keep on giving back to your community. Trying to decide between rescuing the survivors of a shipwreck or taking on a few more resources? Pff, that's not even a question. Be able to take on more people or take a hit to health or loyalty or safety. Any of those can be dealt with, but getting the additional personnel into your colony fixes that bottleneck. Let's end by talking about taking care of your population because there are always two sides of the coin here in Patron. People can be born and they can die. People can immigrate in and they can choose to pack up their bags and leave. As I said, people are only going to have children if they have additional space in their current housing situation. So in continuing to improve the housing, going to houses from tents, stone houses, and two-story houses is going to allow you to have more families and a larger population of children. This larger of population children obviously means that you will eventually have a larger population of adults as well. The shelter is down here as a way that you can house a lot of people if your population is really in flux, but it does specifically note that no children will be born for people living in the shelter. Adults can die from a couple of different reasons, either old age, catastrophes, or poor health. 
Now you can't stop the old age or the catastrophes, but you can care for the adults that you have as well as possible. Improving the health of your citizens comes from wells, herbs, and medicine. Upgrading to stone wells and doing the deep well improvement on your wells is going to be able to give a better health bonus as well as protecting from fires. And I believe that the upgrade to stone wells gives you a larger radius of an area that the well is able to service. Herbs make a great cash crop in the early game and it's pretty easy to continue the production of them. Unfortunately, right now, my one save here with the healer's house uh, is completely broken. It is never receiving the firewood that they need to be able to make a medicine. Hopefully this bug either gets patched or it's a bug that is only affecting me, so you guys are going to be fine. Finally, you're going to want to keep your citizens happy because just like they can move in, they can also pack up their bags and move away. If you hover over the happiness number over here, you get a breakdown of all of the living situation factors that goes into the happiness of your citizens. If any one of these numbers hits a critical level, which is about 40, it's going to glow yellow and a riot can potentially break out. After a few weeks of mostly peaceful protests going on outside of the town hall, if the issue has not been resolved, the rioters will just pack up and leave. I had a very devastating stating riot over safety of my town but in the early years it cut me down from 40 population to 30 population and then I just had to spend several years waiting for the population to recoup. Losing all of these people was very unfortunate and as an aside if I can find it here in the annual you may see messages like this. A seven-year-old was taken away under strange circumstances, and this was specifically when the safety in my town was very low. So it can potentially immediately remove your children just by having low safety. That is a particularly important aspect of being able to keep your population stable. Every one of these needs is fairly important though, so don't be like me, be proactive in making sure that your citizens are happy with everything to do about their lives. If you guys have any other tips or tricks or think that I missed something important, then let me know down in the comments. Also, if there is another aspect of gameplay here in Patreon that you guys would like to see me make a video guide about just like this one, let me know. Your wish is my request. No, I said that wrong. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a good one.